It's time for another break from my longer form conversations with authors, comedians, and filmmakers about their stories for more red carpet coverage from South by Southwest 2023. On this occasion, I spoke with Amy Ray and Emily Saliers, a.k.a. the Indigo Girls, before the South by premiere of their new documentary, It's Only Life After All. The film, directed by Alexandria Bomback, examines the indie band's music career and social impact through archive footage and interviews with fellow musicians, friends, and fans who have been part of a ride that spans for more than 35 years and parts of five decades and counting. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy my conversation with Amy Ray and Emily Saliers, the Indigo Girls. Ladies, thank you so much for the time. Welcome to Austin. Congratulations on this film. Are you enjoying yourself so far? Oh yeah, Austin's awesome. So yeah, great time here. We love Austin. I love the birds. I hear this, I think they're grackles. You they start doing that sound, it's just like, oh, you're back in Austin. Yeah. Not gonna be, uh, not gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you right now. I hate the fucking grackles, so I think you're being, I think you're being sarcastic right no, no, now. No, no, I'm totally. You love the grackles, okay. I love the grackles, because yeah. we don't have grackles where I live, so you know how that goes. Just thank your blessings over time. It would be it would be a problem. Uh, I can't wait to check this film out. Uh, for y'all getting to share this story, why did now feel like the right time to do so? We have no idea, honestly. I mean, Alexandria came to us and pitched doing a documentary, and she she really pitched the idea of speaking to community and her sort of lens that she saw things through. And she's the right. We felt like she was the right filmmaker, honestly. Um, you know, and we were like, why do you, why do you even want to do this? But you know, it, it felt like a, it just felt like kismet, honestly, because we really like the work that she has done. And it's not like a lot of people are like knocking at our door trying to make a film about us. So, you know, it's, I don't know. I don't think we've ever even been that interested in having that done. Hmm. But when we met her, it was like, oh yeah, this is, this is the right way to do it. You know, if you're going to do it, this is the way to do it kind of feeling. And I think too, um, I think it's been three, maybe dipping into four years since it, since the whole thing began. And we met in 2017 and, you know, then COVID hit and we felt like we sort of had to go back after that and reconvene. And so it's just been a long process. And then really, there's so many ways you can tell a story. We're really happy with the arc that Alexandria has given this part of our story. Um, so it's been a journey and it's been a handful of years now and we just put it in the right hands and like Amy said it's an honor and not something we ever pursued so we're just here like wow this is great what is something that surprised each of you about your own story well it's really interesting the first time Alexandra showed us a, a a version of it before it was finalized and it was almost too much for me to take in I recognized it was very good and it was going to be excellent um, and too much emotionally I, I, I just think there was a lot to sort through emotionally historically we were on the road when we saw it preoccupied with that all those just things like that and then we saw it when it premiered at Sundance and it was very exciting. It was like being at a big show or something. And I enjoyed that. And then I saw it again. And I was like, oh, you shouldn't have watched it again. Because <laughs> then the more I watch it, then the more I'm like, get into the critique of myself and all that kind of stuff, which is just a waste of time. So there's a lot in there that captures, you know, what we have been about and what we are about. And it's, you know, it just, uh, it grabs at you a bit. It did me. So I guess it's doing its job. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, that's the best way to, that's sort of the emotions I had too. And I think like, I mean, you look at it and it's and it's just a sliver too of like, it's a one lens to see things through. And it's, and it's just like this one part. There's so many other things that we remember. And so to have it a microscope on this one kind of sliver and lens to see things through is so interesting because she created this arc that and put things together that I hadn't even really put together myself, just about the trajectory of, hom of homophobia and misogyny. And I mean, it's not things that we weren't aware of, but it's just the way that she threaded it and our own growth in that and our own need to grow, <laughs> I could say, you know, because we were young and we didn't, we didn't know a lot and we didn't really handle everything that well all the time. 
And there are times when we contradict ourselves in the movie that she sort of subtly points out, which I think is really interesting to watch just how you change as a person and, and grow up, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and that to me was striking, I guess, you know. I probably wouldn't watch it again, but I definitely learned a lot from it, you know. Because it's just hard to watch yourself for that long. It's like, ah, oh my God. It's yeah. about community, but we're in it the whole time, you know. So it's still like yeah. having to like see yourself do really stupid things sometimes. And, you know, just, ha I mean, there's great things that I want to see again. There's footage of friends that we've had that have died in the Indian community that were really close with us and that have passed on. and. It's a treasure to have that footage of them, you know? And it's just, when that flashes up on the screen, it's like, ah, uh, you know, it, it's gut-wrenching, actually. So I, I would like to have a still photograph of those moments in the film, you know, and how they're wound into things because that was, that has been and still is a honor of the earth and all the Indian activists that mentored us has been a really large part of our career, which, I mean, the music is part, but it's also that, you know? I was completely un unfamiliar with that side of things, so I look forward to getting to check that yeah, uh, check that part of the story out. One more question: We're going to end in a lighthearted manner because Good. you just choked me up with your answer, as did you. So, uh, <laughs> thankfully, I'm I'm actually able to speak right now. But a couple of years ago, the Dixie Chicks decided to change their name yeah. for political, social, and humanitarian reasons, and now they're just the Chicks. Based on that, have y'all ever considered changing your name to the Dixie Chicks? <laughs> I thought you were going to say drop the girls, but uh, yes. no one's ever asked us that. I, I don't think we could get away with using the word Dixie, probably, but uh, yeah. The chick. Well, fuck, you're just going to have to stay the indigo girls then, I guess. <laughs> I we guess be, so. We could be like uh, the indigos or something. I, we try to call ourselves the indigos sometimes because oh, no. girls sound so like, ah, oh, like, you know, yeah. we're old ladies now. I mean, yeah. like, yeah. Indigo ladies. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you all so much uh, for everything. Uh, congratulations on this and best of luck in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Trey. Appreciate Thanks it. a lot. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks to Gentleman Jesus for the intro and outro music. For more of his work, visit gentlemanjesus.com. And thanks to you for hanging out. For more of the show and to connect on social media, visit booksonpod.com. Talk to you next time on Books on Pod. <laughs>